start recording. All right. <clears throat> Okay, um, so today we're going to do birdhouse runs. So um, obviously, like, so the first thing that we're going to have to do when we're creating a script is, uh, let me close out of some of this stuff. Um, we have to find our, like, locations. We have to find what items we're going to use. And we'll basically collect the data of all of that and then once we have all that ready, then we go in and actually create it. So um, obviously for birdhouse runs, we know that they're fixed positions, they don't change. Um, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go find a, uh, I'm gonna go find the positions of those birdhouses. So we get a uh, house teleport. Can you guys see the screen fine? Is it uh, like blurry or anything? Hey Eminem, can you talk floor? I'm not Eminem. Could the real some shitty please stand up? Alright, I'm standing up now. Wait, what? I don't have Fossil Island unlocked. Well, this is, uh, this is not good. Hold on, let me see, let me make sure that my, uh, mushroom trees have these areas, because we're going to use those to, uh, to teleport around. Yeah, I have everything. All right, cool. Well, we'll start here. All right, so for the first position um, is obviously going to be this one right here. Um, so all we're going to use to to find that position is the entity hover and we just hover where this position is and you guys can see uh, where it shows the real ID and then it shows the X and Y so that would be the actual like position of that tile obviously um, so we'll grab those just type these out here real quick and that'll be number one and then we'll use this one as number two And basically what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if the object on this position changes or what the current object is to decide on what we have to do. So we'll do those two first and then these we'll do second. And then as far as um, like knowing what items we're gonna bring out, so to go like completely in depth and make it, you know, automatically detect what birdhouses we can do, what we need to bring, what items, um, we're not gonna get into that for this video in specific, but it could be something that we could attach onto later. Um, but for now, we're gonna just set a specific item and then you could always use like a user input to change what that item would be. All right, so now that we have these positions, uh, we're gonna go ahead and add them in here. So obviously we just go to other variable positions, create new position, and then you just give it a name, type in the position information, and then obviously add it. Uh, so we're gonna use birdhouse underscore I as the uh, first one. And the Z position is zero. And then just to like kind of show you guys what's cool about using a text editor, 
Um, I'm gonna kind of show you guys how you can use a text editor with this as well just to make your life a little bit easier but we'll save this as birdhouse run okay so obviously to find the script that you're working on you just go to your local scripts folder inside of uh, script factory and then you just find the name of it at the top is it at the top? There it is. There it is. All right, cool. So open this up here. So the cool thing about using a text editor is I can copy this. I can paste this four times. And now all I need to do is uh, just change these positions. I don't have to keep going in and adding new things. So we'll add 6, 8, and then 3, 7, 6, 1. Seven seven oh thirty six seventy seven thirty eight eighty two thirty six seventy nine and thirty eight one five. Alright, so we obviously have to change the names of these as well, so do number two, three, and then four. Alright, so I could save this right there. I can reopen this. Uh, we gotta open it first. And now our positions will be added in. So you can see all of our positions are here now. Um, so another thing that we need to do is we need to find out what items we're gonna bring. So uh, I know I wanna bring a hammer, a chisel. Um, if we're gonna do like a log type method, so for that, you know, obviously we wouldn't bring birdhouses that are already made. We would just bring the logs and then the birdhouse that's already there, we would get that clockwork from and then we could just create the birdhouse while we're there. Or you could set it up to uh, bring birdhouses, but for this specific example, we're going to use logs. Um, so I'm going to withdraw basically what my inventory is going to look like uh, when I go for the run, just so I have an idea of what I'm going to bring and I can start getting it all set up. So I'm going to bring out a hammer, um, a chisel, um, we need seeds, uh, barley seeds for example, I'm going to bring 40 because each birdhouse is going to take 10 seeds. Um, we use magic logs, I'll deposit one of those. I think that's it, other than the pendant. So if you're going to use a pendant to get there, obviously withdraw one of those as well. Um, do you guys, am I missing anything? I think that's it, right? I think you've got the clockwork thing. Yeah, you get the clockwork from the previous ones. I would maybe do it with you don't have previous birdhouses planted. Yeah. Um, I mean, so if I was you, I'd maybe go and just do your burnout run you currently have, take the clockworks. Alright, so, um, yeah, so, alright, so we'll withdraw this as our inventory, but, so the biggest thing is, right, after we do our one birdhouse run, we're never going to bring these clockworks out again. So, let's assume that we've already created the birdhouse before, and this is just going to be, like, a continuance of what your current setup is you could add it in to where you you make the first initial one if your accounts never done a birdhouse run before you could set it up that way or you could just manually do one but for what we're gonna do so that we can actually add the collecting portion in and then the creating and then the setting we're gonna just do it like this this is how like 99% of the birdhouse runs are gonna look when we go into it um, let me take that off. Alright, so if this is going to be our inventory setup, oh, we don't have any space. So this is going to be our inventory setup. So um, obviously, what we're going to do is we're going to check. So we got to check to see if we have these birdhouse items. So we're going to create this as a Boolean. And uh, in VS Code, I can just type in Boolean and then. Uh, and do like has items and we'll set that as false for when it starts 
So basically all that's doing there is we're creating this boolean. So if we create the boolean, has items, and then this value right here. So when you start up the script, this is what the value is going to start as. If you set it as true, then when you start the script, it's going to assume that we have items or whatever you have your boolean tied to. So that's all we, we did there. Um, so we set up that boolean there, and now we just have to basically say whether it's true or false. Um, so I will do everything in the, uh, the actual GUI right now, uh, just so that we're staying in here. But so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do get boolean value. So I'm checking um, if we have or if have items is false. Um, hold on, let me close that. Um, so we're checking to see if has items is false. Now we need to tell it to turn it true. So let's see. Let's do an inventory check. If inventory contains um, items right here, and we're gonna do hammer chisel um, and we're just going to do those two for now because those are singular items we're not checking for an amount for those ones so we're checking that and then now we want to check to see if our amount of an item is greater than or equal to X amount so we'll do four and like I said we're gonna hard code this one as magic logs so we're not gonna uh, we could change this later by using a user input um, and it'll just automatically change it for you. But for now, we're just going to do it as that. And we also need to check for the barley seed as well. And again, you could do the same thing for the barley seed. Um, we're going to do greater than or equal to 40. Okay. And then obviously we want to check to see if we have a dig site pendant so that we could teleport here. Um, for dig site pendant, since it is a item that has charges on it, you're going to want to use interact, or not interact, but uh, inventory item contains text. Contains text only means that we could check to see if an item says dig site or uh, pendant or whatever the case is. But then, uh, so like let's say this charge goes down to four, well, it still detect that this item's in our inventory. So we'll do if inventory contains item with text. Excite pendant um, doesn't matter sort by highest or lowest because it's in our inventory already and then text placement it starts with so this is where it starts if we we're using ends with we'd have to add in the uh, the um, what are those called brackets um, because that's that's the ending part so like let's say that you wanted to check to see if an item was like plate legs you would put plate legs as the ends with all right, so basically if we have all of these items, then we're going to edit this Boolean to true. Okay, so now if I was to run this, I'm going to do other debug. Oop, hold on. Show variables. You're always going to want to use something like this so you could see uh, just for debugging purposes. So if I press play, it should return true. I'll press play there and okay so currently it's not so let's see why so um, for anybody that has script factory pro something amazing that you could use is uh, debug method number so we can actually debug this and we can click listen and this tells us right here so if inventory contains item with partial text this is not showing as it, it passed so um, this just means that I must have spelt it incorrectly or whatever the case is. Let me see. So in if inventory contains item with partial text. Dig site pendant. Did I spell it wrong? Uh, let's see. Okay, so the issue there was that uh, I had it as ends with rather than starts with. So we'll rearrange that. 
we'll delete that one and now you can see it turns true all right so for anything that we have true we obviously have to tell it to turn false when we don't have specific items because let's say you know I drop one of these logs well this stays true even though we don't technically have all the items so we're gonna set that to false now and the way that we're gonna do that is if I save this and like I said I'm gonna show you guys some stuff in the in VS code some stuff on the text editor or on the uh, GUI but basically what I can do is I can just take this whole method I can copy it I can paste it here and then now I know that for every or check and I'll, I'll explain it like why I'm doing it this way um, we have to obviously have the get boolean has items is false or well this will end up being true so we'll change this to true and I'll change this one to false because these are opposites so we're checking if this boolean has items is true and if inventory does not contain a hammer or if let's see here I'll change this to chisel obviously we gotta we gotta continue this on because we're gonna add an or check in here so we'll do okay so now we're checking to see if we have a hammer a chisel magic logs barley seed or the dig site pendant and we'll carry on this boolean check you guys have to have this boolean go through with any or because basically how this is reading it's reading as like this block and if this block doesn't turn true then it will read this one then it reads this one and then so forth so having this boolean it's like if you've got it in one line you should carry it down if you're doing it this way um, so we're going to check to see if magic logs is less than four uh, we're going to check to see if barley seeds is less than 40 and then we're going to see if we don't have a dig site pendant so basically if any of these values return true um, meaning like we don't have a hammer in the inventory then it's going to change this boolean to false and then I can just change this method to one save that open this up in script factory and you see how easy it, that was to uh, use VS code to to produce all of these methods here I didn't have to go in and add each individual item um, so that's why VS codes you know it's pretty powerful when you actually get into to creating scripts alright so anyway so if we run this here we're gonna pull up this debugger press play it's true right now but let's say that we drop the hammer it's gonna turn false because obviously we don't have the hammer in the inventory alright so that's pretty much it for a, like the boolean aspect um, and setting our items so now we know if we have these items then we can start the run um, so let's say that we don't have the items we obviously need to withdraw them from the bank um, so we're gonna go into that now we're gonna create our banking method here so the first thing that we're gonna want to check is uh, if has items is false okay and if bank is closed we want to make sure that the bank is closed before we open it and we also want to check to see if we are at the closest bank so um, so let's do if my player is not at closest bank we're gonna walk to the closest bank so you walk to closest bank alright so then again showing you guys what you can do with VS code to make this a little bit quicker we can just copy this one method paste it Oh, so we're going to keep this one bank is open false bank is at closest bank now this would turn true because we walked to the closest bank and then we're just going to add this <clears throat> method here it's going to be bank open so that's just going to open the bank for us and we can change that to three save that and again nice and easy we've got these methods in here um, so basically if Actually, I'm just going to deposit one of these real quick. So we're obviously not going to be at the closest bank, and we don't have our items. So if I press play, so I'm not sure if uh, if this bank on Fossil Island is. Yeah, I don't think this bank's actually supported through a spot. So it's going to walk me to the closest bank that it thinks that it knows. Um, 
It's probably going to be the, the Varrock Bank. But we'll let it play. Let's see. Gotta love OS Bot. Any day now. Just going to refresh it. Well, there we go. Now it wants to go. <clears throat> Alright, so anyway, so while it's one, uh, walking to the closest bank, um, once it gets there, it's going to open this bank up, and then we're going to add in the uh, item withdrawal. So um, it's going to be pretty much the exact same thing as setting it up like this, where it's uh, checking to see if the item's in the inventory. Um, but there's a specific way that we want to go about doing this. So one thing that I messed up on when I created my birdhouse runner originally is uh, I withdrew all of the items first rather than checking to see if I have all the items in the bank. So I ended up like adding this birdhouse runner with switch to script into uh, my winter tot script and I would just make it every hour I'd go do a birdhouse run. Well I ran out of items so every hour I would switch to the birdhouse script and it would go and withdraw full inventory, but it had one item that it didn't have in the bank. Um, so it basically canceled that whole thing. So every hour it would withdraw all these items, wouldn't do a birdhouse run, it banked them all, switch back to Winter Todd, and continue going. And that led to a ban because it was obviously pretty, uh, pretty bot like. Um, so the way that we're going to do that is we're just going to check the bank first. So. Um, you could do this setting it up as like another boolean. We could do bank has items. Okay, we'll save that. And now, um, so we can just do variables boolean get boolean value. If bank has items is false, we obviously have to check to see if the bank is open because we're going to check um, items in the bank. So that's another thing. So if you're checking for items in a bank, always make sure that you have uh, if bank is open uh, check before that. So uh, just in case, like if the bank's not open, well, it's still checking, right? It's still checking all those items, even though the bank isn't open, which would result in possibly running an action if you had like if bank doesn't contain an item. Um, so we'll do if bank is open, and then we're going to check for if bank contains items. And we'll do chisel, hammer. It's basically just going to be this exact same setup. Um, and then we'll do if bank get amount. Where is it at? Do magic logs is greater than or equal to four. If bank get amount of item barley seed is greater than or equal to four or forty. Um, another thing, so OSBot mirror mode has an issue with, uh, like, let's say I withdraw this item and I have placeholders on. Well, now it shows as zero, but technically it reads that there's this item is in the bank. Um, so to prevent OSBot from like thinking that this item's actually in the bank, you'd want to do a if bank get amount of item, let's say stamina potion one, is greater than or equal to one, then it would return true rather than reading that it is in the bank. Um, for this specific scenario, we're just going to keep this one as it is, but these ones will work fine. Uh, give me one moment, i got to check my phone. All right, so now we've checked that, and then we also want to check to see if uh, bank, let's see, contains item with text. Um, and we're going to use the dig site pendant. 
and it doesn't really matter uh, matter highest to lowest because if we have one or we have ten, we obviously know that there's at least one of them in the in the bank. Um, starts with obviously we're going to use that. All right, so then we will turn this boolean to true. Bank has items true. And then obviously for every boolean we need to to be able to set it to false as well. So we'll do what I did earlier, we'll just save this, okay. Take this whole method here. Duplicate it. Wish you trying to speak? No, sorry, I have um, control set as push to talk, but I'm copying and pasting stuff on PS code. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> got, no, no, you're good. I just, I didn't know if you were trying to add in. All right, so we're going to copy this one here and we'll change this to hammer make sure to change this to false change that to false change that to true okay and change this one to false this is less than less than all right so now we can save this okay and I can reopen oh actually let me change the method number okay so now I can run this and here. Why is it not starting? All right, so currently bank has items is false. Let me see. Uh, we're going to debug this to see why. So again, like that pro feature, debug method number, this is something that I use all the time because sometimes I just don't write stuff correctly. So, um, oh, not five, I need uh, to debug four. Okay, so if bank contains chisel and hammer, so it looks like, do I not have maybe a chisel? Okay, so I don't have a chisel in the bank. Um, so another thing that we could do, right, is we could actually check to see, well, actually what we should do is, uh, the chisel or the hammer or whatever the case is we also want to verify that the inventory doesn't contain it because if the inventory contains it then we know that we do have that item um, so we'll do if inventory contains false and then you could just do that for the rest just continue this on change this here because this is an inventory check not a bank check um, we'll do same here And actually, I'm doing this on the, well, kind of, but kind of not. I need to add it to method four as well. And this one's going to be different. So we're going to copy this here. Does anybody have any questions right now? Or am I running too fast through things? All right, so this would turn this uh, false if this was the case. Uh, for as, as far as like checking to see if this is true, so now we would check to do uh, do something like if bank contains, let's see here, chisel, hammer, um, I'm gonna split these up, do a separate check. Okay, uh, so this would turn true. Now, if we were to deposit the full inventory and run this, this should run correctly. Let's see. Let's 
check that. All right, so yeah, now bank has items is true. Um, so let's say that if bank has items is true, now we know that we can actually withdraw these specific items. Um, <clears throat> again, this is like a better way to do it rather than withdrawing each individual item and then checking for has items is true. You could still do that to, to start the run, but um, that way you're not withdrawing the full or from your bank and then realizing you don't have the items to actually start the run. There's no point in continuing if you don't have items. Um, so like let's say that the bank is open and bank has items is false. We can also tie in an inventory check to make sure that the inventory is empty or the inventory doesn't cl uh, contain any of it, which is what we did right here. We just check that. Um, we could do if bank has items is false and bank is open and inventory is empty then we could stop script log out or you could start your restocking method through the grand exchange whatever you're gonna plan on doing with your script um, so for us we're gonna check to see okay so if this boolean is true so we'll get that boolean value bank has items is true okay if bank is open um, now we want to start withdrawing these items so we could do uh, let's do inventory I'm sorry bank withdraw item do hammer uh, what did I not finish oh the amount all right, so now we have that in there. It should, there we go, so it withdraws the, the hammer. Now we also need to, to add a check-in to make sure that our inventory does not contain a hammer. So we'll do if inventory does not contain items, hammer, then we withdraw a hammer. Um, so something that you're gonna wanna do is, uh, let's do, cause, so like, let's say we do withdraw the chisel, right? and let's say it comes back to, to method five, well, it's gonna end up turning it false because, well, actually, no, I'm sorry, it won't because we have that, that inventory check, so we're good. Um, let's do, okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this. We're gonna basically just duplicate it like I've been showing you. Um, it's a lot easier for me to, to do it this way, but now I can just change this one line. I don't have to go through all the different uh, menus to, to re-add that item. So now we have, if inventory does not contain chisel, withdraw the chisel. We need to do the same for the magic logs. So we'll do if inventory, and we actually need to use a get item amount. So if get item amount magic logs is less than four, so we'll copy that we'll paste this in here and uh, something else that we can do so like let's say that we withdrew for some reason we had like two magic logs in the inventory we could do something like if inventory contains uh, true just saying if it does contain magic logs and if the amount of magic logs in the inventory is less than four we could deposit all of those magic logs and then withdraw four. So we'll do uh, bank, do deposit all items, magic logs, and then we'll do a bank, withdraw item, magic logs, four. Let me just edit these, copy. And do the same thing here. Okay, so so now basically, if we have any magic logs in the inventory and it's less than the amount that we want, we're going to deposit those magic logs and then withdraw the the amount that we want. But we also need to check to see if we don't have any magic logs in the inventory, then we're going to withdraw four. All right, so let me transfer all of this back over to the SFGUI. Actually, I'm going to add in the barley seeds as well. So I can just copy this one for magic logs, and I can change the name to barley seed. And just do 
control C, I can control H, control V, and I can just replace. All right, so now I want to change the amounts as well. So 40, I'll do that there, and then change the um, method number. I'm also going to add a, a comment so we can see our banking section. Okay, so we're going to reload this in here. And then you guys can see. All right, so right here we have that whole setup. All right, so now for the last part, we need to check to see if uh, if the bank had or if the inventory has a dig site pendant or not, because we need to withdraw that if we don't. So we're gonna do it's gonna be the same setup. So we can just copy this line, paste it, move this below. We're gonna check to see if the bank is open, and then um, we're gonna check to see if inventory does not contain item with text. Dig site pendant. And then we also want to check to see if um, we're not equipping that item. Um, if not wearing item containing text. That's the amulet. Okay. Then we're going to withdraw item and we're, we want to sort by lowest so what sort by highest or lowest well, all that means is like again if if an item has a charge on it um, we're gonna use that to determine if we're gonna withdraw like let's say dig site pendant 3 rather than dig site pendant 5 normally you want to use the lowest charged items so that you're not using all of you know number 5 then all of four and then all of three. You want to use the lowest amount, so that's why we choose that one. Um, and we just need one of those. Okay. And now we are pretty much good to go. So we should have our whole withdrawing section built out for us. Uh, so if I go ahead and press play here, now it's withdrawing the items. Now, obviously, if you want these withdrawn in like a certain order, so like let's say that you wanted the magic logs withdrawn last, then you would just, oh, okay. So actually, here, let me show you guys this. So obviously, it's trying to withdraw this item, but technically, the lowest item is a placeholder, which is why it's doing this. So you can see I have a placeholder. That's why I try to just release them or don't use placeholders. Um, but yeah. So now if I press play again, this should end up withdrawing that item. There we go. <clears throat> Alright, so anyways, so let's say that like you guys wanted to withdraw it in an organized fashion. You just change up the withdrawing order. So instead of me withdrawing these magic logs right here, I can X those, I can add them onto the end, change these method numbers here. Again, I'm using the VS Code because it's a lot easier to change stuff in. And we'll save that. I want to just do script, open, refresh. All right, so I'm going to deposit that. We're going to press play. And here it goes. Also open up this debugger. So sh showing that bank has items is true. And then as soon as we get all of our items in the inventory, has items turns true. So now we know, okay, we're set, we're ready to go, we can start this run. Um, so to actually start the run, so let's say has items is true, now we need to, uh, to declare that portion. So we're just gonna do if get boolean has items is true. Let's do if bank is open, we're gonna close the bank because obviously we need to interact with the dig site pendant and we can't uh, do that with the bank open. So do if bank is open, 
We're going to do close bank. And then uh, from there, we can go on to our actual teleporting method. So that closes the bank. And now we could do if inventory contains item with text. Um, inventory, where is that? Contains item with text. Dig site pendant. And we need to check to see if we're not on Fossil Island. So that's an area that we need to add. So what we'll do is if you go to other variables, utilities, open explodes map. Uh, close out of all this. All right, so we open up explodes map. We can go over to where Fossil Island is. Actually, I don't know where Fossil Island is. I think it's on the other side. Yeah, it's over here. <clears throat> Um, the easiest way, because we're just checking to see, like, just this big area, right? We're, we don't care what specific location we're at. We're just checking to see if we are on Fossil Island. So we can just make a square <laughs> around here. And we can copy this right here. Actually, we can copy this whole thing, because uh, we can just paste the, the full thing in there. So we'll do area, create new area. Fossil Island. Uh, and paste area. We can just control V, confirm. OK. Now we also need to check for where we teleport in at. So this is where we're going to teleport in at. We don't need to, to recreate another box around this. We're just going to check. And we're going to change the z-axis on this. So we'll just do another variables area, create new area. Um, we'll do fossil island teleport. And we'll paste this area. And we'll just change this z-axis to 1. OK. And now, um, to, again, make it clear to like why I did that. So when you teleport in to fossil island, this house right here you actually teleport in upstairs of that house so the z-axis changes on that so we need to we need to like declare that that we are on fossil island we're just um, at a different level so that's why I'm adding that in alright so with those two added we'll do add new line here we need to do a boolean check right so we need to get boolean value has items is true so we want to make sure that we have the items in our inventory and then we want to verify that we're not on fossil island because we don't want to teleport there if we're already there so we're just going to do if my player if area does not contain my player fossil island if area does not contain my player fossil island teleport then we're going to uh, do an inventory interact with item containing text dig site pendant Sort by highest, doesn't matter. Text placement starts with, and the action is rub. Um, one thing that we do need to add, we need to add a if, uh, if we're not in dialogue. Because obviously when we rub this, we go into dialogue. All right, so we'll do a um, dialogues if not in dialogue. Just add that in there. And uh, just real quick, I'm going to go get the actual teleport so we can just teleport there. I don't know why I don't have it. It doesn't make any sense. I think I might have removed it once. Oh, yeah, I did because I was checking to see if, uh, if the config changes for what, um, what you like have unlocked. I think it was when I was making the Rune Dragon script. All right, so I'm going to ask again, does anybody have any questions what we went over? If you do, it's perfectly fine. I can answer it. Is everybody still, like, kind of tracking? Okay. Doug, Wishy, did you guys have anything that you wanted to add in? Doug 
sucks. <laughs> no, nah, everything seems to be going well so far. Um, yeah, I think you're giving the guys a lot of useful information. Um, yeah, that nah, seems to be going well, man. Alright, so if you guys wanted to make this like even more intense, like let's say that you're starting up a bot farm, you could make it to where it's using the dig site mm -hmm. pendant here and you could make it to where it unlocks all the tree teleports, but we're just going to assume that this is already unlocked. If you have a birdhouse ready, or birdhouse, yeah, birdhouse ready account, we're just going to assume that you have all of this unlocked and everything's good to go. Alright, so... Um, we'll close that out and then so now if I rub this right we should be here which is what I wanted alright so we'll go to Edgeville real quick and then uh, so now we interact with this and then we do rub uh, so this should right so if I press play right now it's not going to do anything because we are in Fossil Island but now once we're not there we go so it's going to interact with it and you know what, so that, is that not counting as dialogue? Alright, what we'll do to fix that is we're going to do a uh, sleep random. Just a little bit of a sleep here so that it doesn't keep looping. And let's try this again. There we go, so now it doesn't do it immediately again. Alright, so now we're going to check to see if uh, this option is visible, right? Because if this option is visible, then this is where we want to go. So we're going to just continue carrying on if has items is true. If we are in dialogue. And then let's say uh, dialogue if pending option. We could actually do that one instead. Um... complete dialogue and we'll do fossil island or you could set this up to just do uh, oops there we go sorry had it on the wrong line um, or you could set this up to just do like a keyboard you could do other where is it keyboard type key code and you could just do two um, but that might not always be the case like if you have different dialogues uh, shown if you didn't have this one unlocked or w whatever the case was alright so we do that and we do want to add a little bit of a sleep here um, we can do a sleep teleporting all this is just because like so when we originally like teleport once and then as soon as it goes out well you're technically not at fossil island yet so it's gonna want to rub it again and then do the same thing um, so you could either do like a sleep while teleporting, that should work, or we could do a sleep until, and I could just do this as like, I don't know, five seconds. And then we'll, so basically what that said is now we need to select the check that we're going to sleep until. So we're going to sleep until if area contains my player, and we know that this is the teleport, so now it should sleep until our player reaches this area. All right, so now we need to tell it to, to use this magic mush tree to uh, continue going on. So another like pro feature that you could use, you could use click to script. This will make it nice and easy. Just enable it right there, and we can click that. So now <clears throat> it's automatically generated the action and a check for us to use. Now we just need to add a couple more checks in to make sure that this is what we want. So we'll add in um, if area contains my player, we can actually just, oh no, we can't do if area contains my player, um, fossil island teleport, put that right there. Um, if ours two object exists, yep, that works. Then we're going to interact with ours two object mag, uh, magic mush tree. Now we need one more check. We're going to have to check to see if uh, a widget is visible um, or if it's actually not visible which will be the actual teleporting widget. So all you need to do to uh, determine that is just choose widgets here. And you can see mycelium transport uh, system. So you can actually use like if widget is visible containing text or you could use the actual specific like widget IDs. Um, we're just going to use if widget is visible containing text. 
So we'll go into widgets. If visible contains text, we're going to use that top line there. So mycelium transportation system. Okay. All right. So, um, you know, I need to do, so we're going to just move this down one line. But I need to do if this widget is not visible, which again, a nice, easy way that you can do this. Just save it. Copy this one line, paste it here, and just change this to false. So that's checking if it does not contain. So if I script open, refresh, now you can see if widget contain text is not visible. All right, so now we can run this to test it out. Uh, let's see, so what? Oh, you know what? We have the wrong ID there. This needs to be, what is it, use? Use. Script open, refresh, press play. And there we go. So now it uses this. Okay, so obviously this is now visible, so we can continue on from method 17. And uh, so this actual like one method, this will work for when we're teleporting back. Like, so we're gonna obviously go to Verdant Valley first, and then after that we're gonna go to Mushroom Meadow. So we don't need to make another method for all of these uh, interactions, right? We only need to make one specific method. And uh, what we're gonna use, we're gonna use integers now. So we're gonna determine based off the integer, what birdhouses you've completed, which ones you haven't completed, and which ones you should go on to next. Um, so all we'll do for that is just do other variables, integer, create new integer. We're gonna name this as, uh, let's do birdhouse, and then set value zero this is just what it's gonna load in as it's gonna start with this value so it's gonna be set as zero alright so we're gonna do if widget containing text is visible and we're gonna do if um, widgets I'm sorry not widgets if integer variables integer get integer birdhouse equals zero or so for like the sake of this tutorial just to make it uh, kind of make sense we're just gonna start this off as one so like I guess for like coding wise everybody starts as zero but we're not gonna do it that way we're gonna do it nice and uh, un uncodely like I don't know um, so we're gonna set it as one so when we start the script it's automatically gonna be set as one which means that we need to go to the first birdhouse first we haven't been to the second, third, or fourth yet. So um, basically what this is saying is if integer is birdhouse equals one, now we need to interact with Verdant Valley. Or we could actually add um, if it's less than two. So like let's say that we did the one and for some reason you teleported out, right? Well now it knows, well it's still less than two, we need to go back to Verdant Valley. So we'll, we'll change that here. Actually, I'll just change it on VS Code, nice and easy. Let's do less than two. Oh, I'm sorry, if it's less than or equal to. Open that, refresh. Okay, so if it's less than or equal to two, then we're gonna select Verdant Valley. Um, now again you could use like click to script for this we could just do that right there and now it automatically um, you know sets up this method for us uh, so then if we wanted to do so like let's save this here and we could do basically what I'm going to do is just change or copy this paste this here change this to method 18 let's do if this is uh, greater than 2 open that refresh let's open up this magic mush tree again and if we do click the script mushroom meadow there it goes so it does that one as well which actually let me check to see 
if this widget 162 no hold on take that widget off why is it doing that one hey project are you here one second All right, so right now, click the script is reading this widget as a wrong widget, which is fine. It doesn't, we don't really need it because we've got the first one, so we can just go off of that one. Um, but for the sake of this, we're just going to refresh this, open it back up. And we could do interact with widget containing text. Let's just get rid of this. We can just do verdant valley. The only reason why it's putting this color in here is because if you actually like uh, go over the widget and you check it with the widget debugger, it's going to show that color value. But uh, we don't need that specifically. So we can just copy this here, paste this in. This is Mushroom Meadow. So we'll change that value there. Meadow. Okay, and then uh, so now basically if our run is uh, like if we've done one or two and we need to go on to three or four, then it will go to Mushroom Meadow. Um, so we're going to go back to Verdant Valley and this is good to go. So now if, I'm actually going to take you back to the, to the teleport location. I'm going to show you that it should go to the correct location. All right, so if we go ahead and press play, so it's going to use the magic mushroom, and it should, ch yep, there we go, goes to Verdant Valley. Now see, so it tried to interact again, so all we need to do is add a sleep while teleporting um, here, so it's not continuing the next action. So we'll just pop that in there, save it should be good all right so now we need to check to see if we are at this location so um, the first thing that we're gonna do is we if we use the like this here this is the advanced debugger for uh, script factory um, another pro edition feature really cool so you can actually use ours to object and you could see all these objects that are around you can see it's gonna highlight it both on the minimap as well as in the game um, and it shows you everything around so obviously we know magic birdhouse at this position which is also our uh, number one position we could see the ID of that object um, but let's say so like I'm gonna empty this for example and then we're just gonna have one that's not there so if I refresh this here you see space so this object 30568 is the object that we're going to uh, look at and we're going to see if this is there or if something else is there um, so like let's say that it was uh, magic birdhouse or you could you could have it set to like if ours to object has action empty um, you could just do that instead to empty it that way you could use any birdhouse um, but again it just it varies on what you want to do exactly all right, so we're going to check. We're going to do if, um, let's see here, if ours to object. Actually, let me see what this magic uh, birdhouse is. So that's 6, 7. I think I'm pretty sure that no matter what object it is, like if it's a U birdhouse or uh, whatever the case is, I'm pretty sure that they all show as the the separate ob like the the same object let me see because I think like on yeah so the real ID is gonna change so like if we go to the next one um, I'm pretty sure it's gonna show us like six six or six five let's see yeah so this one is six five yeah so actually so we could just check to see um, the real ID if it's 
changed or whatever the case is. Let me check to see what this real ID is on this one. All right, so this real ID is 30552. You can see that right under a visible true. That real ID is 31838. So I think the real ID, when that changes, I'm not sure if, uh, well, actually, I, I am sure. Um, if it's like a U or a Teak or Mahogany Birdhouse, it's going to be a different real ID for each one. It's not going to be the same. Um, so you could check to see if the real ID does not equal 30552. Um, then we know that we have a Birdhouse that's already been placed there. Um, so what we'll do is if rs2 object um, does not have real ID what is it again 30552 30552 actually that's that should go there we're just gonna put I don't know what the ID is off the top of my head we're just gonna place a number in <clears throat> so it would have been 30568 and like so this one's 30567 so let me save this real quick and change this so 30568 so if this does not have the real ID for the space um, and let's do 19 uh, I'm not going to do that in there save that switch it over to here all right, so if this space does not have the real ID of the actual space, so if there's a birdhouse planted there, um, then we will check to see if rs2 object um, has action. And it's going to be 30568, and the action is empty. I believe. Yeah, empty. Um, then we are going to interact with the object. So we're going to do interact with RS2 object. And we don't need, so like you could use a position filter, which is the reason why I collected the positions originally. But since the objects are different, they're not like that, like the same object overall. We just use the ID. We don't need to, uh, we don't need to actually use position filter. So we can just do uh, interact with RS2 object. We'll do 30568 ID empty. Um, so when we empty this, now we're going to check to see if the object changes, like the real ID changes to the space. So let's do if RS2 object um, has real ID 30568. 30552 change that to ID up that one so if this has the real ID and then if um, we could just change this here copy that paste it bring below I'm gonna just change this on the uh, VS code because it's easier but if this has action build then we're obviously going to build. But we want to verify that we have the item in our inventory first. So um, let's say that we just add that here. Add new line. If inventory contains item with text, that way you guys can use this later on with like multiple different birdhouses. So if inventory contains item with text, we'll do birdhouse lowercase we're gonna uh, doesn't matter there but we are gonna choose ends with okay then we're going to interact with build space so do rs2 object interact with rs2 object three zero five six eight ID build boom all right so that's basically all we're gonna do there but now we need to to detect if we don't have um, the birdhouse that we need to create it which all that we have to do here 
is uh, basically see if we have the clockwork in the inventory and we have this, whatever the case is, um, then we can build it, right? So we'll just do one uh, check here. If inventory contains items, I'll do uh, clockwork. And if inventory contains item with text, again, so you guys can make this uh, be able to be used for any logs. We'll just do logs, we'll do ends with. And then uh, we want to do if. Um, let's do. All right, so I actually forgot. So if we do. So I was going to use the if Boolean has items is true, but technically when we use this once, um, our has items is going to go false because it's going to be less than four, which we need to change that to if, uh, if we're not on Fossil Island. Right, so let's do has items false. Um, or actually, what we'll do, because like, let's say that you are creating it and you're just keeping the accounts on Fossil Island at the bank, uh, we could just do like if not at closest bank, or if uh, I don't know the uh, whatever that bank chest is, since OSBot doesn't recognize it as a bank. But for this specific instance, we'll just do if. Um, if we are not at Fossil Island for the has items false so all we're going to do here is if area does not contain my player Fossil Island I can copy this here we're going to paste this on every single um, one here and again well actually you know what I'm going to take that back we don't need to paste it on everyone we only need to paste it on the well this one too because if the pendant breaks or whatever but barley seed and magic logs so because obviously those are items that we're going to be using while we're here we don't want it to change to false while we're actually here so now we can use this boolean we'll do if variables get boolean has items is true it's just a little extra in there um, we're going to use the Inventory interact with item. And do the hammer. Now you could randomize this too. So like, I'm actually going to add that in just so you guys can see an example of randomization. We're going to create a new integer. We're going to do this as random. We're going to keep this value set as zero. And uh, let me go ahead and increase this method here. We're going to add it up up above here. So we're going to do if integer uh, get integer random equals zero. So that's the default value, right? We're going to add a new line here. We're going to operation integer, generate random integer, um, random. We're going to set one or two. OK, so now that this is set, now we could just do a check here for uh, if integer, get integer random equals one, OK? Okay, so if random equals one, we're gonna use the um, the hammer on the logs. If it's two, then we're gonna use the chisel on the logs, just to add that little randomization in there. Um, where did it go? There it is. All right, so we're gonna do inventory interact with item hammer or use use as the action and then we're going to interact with item that contains text logs ends with and it's going to be the same action it's going to be use all right, so we're going to save that. And again, I'm just going to pull it up in uh, VS Code because it's easier to duplicate it. And then something else that we want to do is we want to go ahead and just generate a random integer again after we use it. So like, let's say that you wanted to, to use it once, and then let's say the next time you wanted to generate a new integer to see if it's going to 
use a chisel this time. We can just copy this method here. We can attach that onto this action or that method and it generates another random integer. And same for this one. So we'll do this as 23. And all we need to change is if this equals 2 and we'll change this to chisel. So now we can save that. Refresh. Okay, so now it's going to randomize whether it's going to use which. So they should end up using the hammer or the chisel on this, creates the birdhouse, and then it should build this space. So let's see. We actually need to add a little bit of sleep there. So you see it tried to use the magic log again. So we'll just do a, yep, we'll do that. We'll add new here, sleep random, 600, 1200. And this is just gonna sleep for one to two ticks. Okay, so now I can press play. All right, so now for the build option, method 20, let me do debug method number. We'll see why that's not working. Uh, if inventory contains item with partial name birdhouse. Let's see. Oh, okay, so it's uh, spaced. Let's do birdhouse. Alright, so now if we load this, oh, that's another thing. So, method to walk to closest bank, because has items is false, um, we need to do, so technically you wouldn't be starting this like mid-run, I just started it mid-run because I was debugging um, but we could do let's see here um, so technically we could run this down into like oh it actually used it anyways we could we could run this down into like if we have three logs and we have one birdhouse or we have two logs and two birdhouses whatever the case is um, it's so confusing to do it that way so this is <clears throat> this is a one-off issue where again I'm starting it mid run where I've already like changed something if you were to start the scripts as you should you're not gonna get into this issue so we're just gonna overlook this but the way that I'm gonna do it to like get it to go is I'm just gonna change this value the default value so when it loads in it'll load in as true that way we can continue on um, it did end up using the birdhouse already, so, like, I don't know if you guys seen it or not, I didn't see it use the birdhouse, but, um, now we know, so, like, if the birdhouse is placed here, now we know that we need to add the seeds to it, right? So, we're gonna hover this, we're gonna check, so, we can't really use the, the real ID, but what we can do is we could check to see... Well, actually, we will use the real ID. We'll check to see if the real ID is not um, that space ID, and then we'll check to see if it does not have action empty, because once you use the seeds on it, it should show an action as empty. So all we'll do for that is we will... Um, let me check. What's the real ID? Or the ID is 30568. And the real ID is 30552. So we're going to check to see if I'm just copying this and I'm going to paste it. So if it does not have the real ID as the space um, and we do not have action empty, um, I'm just going to add it. If RS2 object does not have action 30568 empty 
Make sure to turn this as ID. Run the same method number. Um, and then we're going to add new line, other variables, get Boolean value if has items is true, because we're still checking to see if like we're actually here. We'll take that out, but we'll use like if inventory contains item with text, seeds, or seed. If inventory contains seed ends with then we're going to inventory interact with item that contains text seed we're going to use okay make sure to set that as 24 and we're going to use that on this uh, object so we're going to use that on 30568 interact with r2 object 30568 id Action is going to be use and set that there. And we're going to add a new line because we want to make it sleep. We don't want it to use it and then immediately go and use it again. So we're going to do a sleep until we're going to do like 2000 milliseconds. All sleep until does is like it's going to sleep until this check is true. Or until this time has ended. So if I set it as 100,000 milliseconds, it would sleep 100,000 milliseconds until either that time has ended or the check turned true that you're checking for. And the check that we're going to check for is if uh, RS2 object has action empty. So we're going to do RS2 object has action. It's 30568 ID empty okay all right so this should put seeds in there press play there we go so all is good we've got seeds in there and then uh, another thing that we could add what's it doing uh, okay so 19, that's because we, okay. So what we need to do is we need a, to add a timer now. So we need to know also that like for one, we've planted at birdhouse one. So we're gonna increase that integer that we created. We're gonna set a timer as well so that we know that hey, we shouldn't empty anything because this timer hasn't ended yet. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and create a timer, new timer, birdhouse, timer um, time so we're gonna do as one hour for example um, let me see what exactly I think it's like 3.6 million 60,000 times 60 yeah 3.6 million okay we could add a little bit of random deviation we'll do like uh, five minutes I think that's like I don't know nine or not I don't know. Let's see here. Times five. 300,000? Yeah. Three hundred thousand. Okay. Alright, so what we're gonna do is when we interact with this object, um, it kind of sucks because I lost it's like when it deposited it. I didn't see what the what the widget came up as on the chat box because I could have used that to like display um, to restart the timer or whatever. We don't really need it though. We could just attach it to this interaction. Um, so what we can do here is we're just going to add new line there. We're going to do integer uh, perform operation birdhouse. We're going to set as two so basically like we know that one is done now we can move on to two and if we go back into this I don't I don't know if I added it up here or not um, where is it at right here 
so empty. Uh, actually, I'll just add it right here. So we'll do a check here. So we'll do if integer get integer birdhouse equals one, then we run this. Now I'm going to save this and I'm just going to duplicate it for the next four. Um, and VS Code, because again, it's easier to change. I don't have to keep adding all the methods. So now we'll copy that, paste that here. We'll do if birdhouse equals two, I set this as three, and it's going to be this one over here, which the object changes. So it's 30567. Let's change that there. And that one is done. But what we also need to add the uh, emptying factor. So let me comment this out a little bit. Let's do uh, building birdhouse one. This will be building birdhouse two and so forth you guys understand it we also want to comment out so I don't lose it uh, this right here so emptying 19 we'll do empty birdhouse one empty build Oh, this is actually adding seeds. All right, so that one's empty. This one's build. And all I'm doing, like, the only reason why I'm commenting this out is so it's easier to understand. If I was to look back into this, I could just look at the comment that I put, and I'd know where I left off. Um, I'm going to move this here. We're just going to kind of organize this up a little bit better. But we're going to put this up here because this doesn't need to be in the middle of a like birdhouse uh, portion. Change these method numbers. So this is build bird, empty bird, uh, birdhouse one, build birdhouse one, and then this one's add seeds birdhouse one 23 24 alright so now all I have to do for the the next four is I can just copy all of this paste it here change this all to two I can get rid of this one but I do need to know what the real IDs are. So remember, this one is 30568, as you can see right there. This one's 30567. So we'll just change this one. You can do Control H, 30567. I'll just change it for all of these here. And then now, so now this one's all set up. And this one's ready to go. Um, since this is still visible, everything's good. It should be able to just run over there and uh, interact. Um, I do want to add a check here to see, like, to verify that we are on birdhouse two. Uh, so the same thing here, like, get integer birdhouse equals one. So we can do this here and there, um, but these are going to be two. And this sets as three. I need to add it here and here. Okay, let me fix all these method numbers real quick and then we'll run this. All right. While we're at it, we're going to add in the other two as well, just to get these down. So again, I'm just going to change all this stuff to the next one. 
Um, I don't know what those real IDs are off the top of my head, so I'll have to change it when I actually get there. But we have it added in, and we're going to change the method numbers for now. And then obviously we want to set these to the amounts that they're supposed to be set at. So uh, like this one sets as 3. Now we know if this equals 3. If this equals 3. If this equals 3. We're going to set this one as 4. If this equals 4. This e equals 4. This one equals 4. So now after the, the final one, the fourth one, now we know that we're done, right? So we could set this integer back to zero, we could set it as 10, we could set it as 127, it doesn't matter what we set it to. We just need to know that whatever we set this value to, we're gonna link that up with the um, with the timer, and we're gonna do if timer, or if uh, this value equals four, I'm sorry, 10, let's say, we're gonna set it as 10. Then we're going to start this timer, the birdhouse timer, which will start at one hours. Um, when we do that, we're going to reset it back to one. And then uh, we'll, I'll show you guys once we get there. But yeah, so that, that's why I'm setting it as 10. All right, so anyway, so in between here, right, so we're going to do one and then two, but then we need to use the uh, mush tree again. But just remember earlier where we had the 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 mush tree like setting um, we can we've already got it set so now like when it knows that we're on three or four it knows as soon as we click this it'll know that we need to go to um, the next one right so all I have to add on here is uh, if I look for the mush tree where we used it right here method 16 I can just add a we're gonna add a variables, add or. And I'm sorry for, uh, I know I'm still using the, the VS code, but it was just easier to, to multiplicate all those methods and change it there. But, so now we'll do if variables, add or, and we'll do 16. Actually, I'm gonna transfer this over to the script factory GUI now that we've done that. But all, all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do an integer check, so on method 16 we're going to do get integer if birdhouse is greater than 2 then we need to interact with the magic mush tree we also need to check to see if this is not visible um, and we also want to check to see if this exists so save that okay now let's go ahead and play this let's see how far it gets based off of what we've changed well actually uh, one thing that I do need to set so since we've already like kind of done this and we're starting off mid run uh, I'm gonna switch this to 2 because again I'm just presetting it so it knows that it's on number 2 so now if we click play play There we go. It's going to use the item on there. Interacts. Seeds. All right, so let's see here. Um, I don't know why it did empty again. Let me see what I have it set to do. equals to interact with empty so uh, has real ID false three zero five six seven has that okay so I actually need to um, add more checks here because I don't have anything that's telling it like right now it's it's basically reading as you know we had just set it Again, I think I was going to like set a timer or something, um, and then if that timer was running, then it wouldn't do this. Um, 
Which actually, now that I think of it, it we can't technically do that either. Um, the way that we're going to do this is we're going to we're going to have an additional integer. So we're going to create another integer for like uh, empty, right? And it's going to be basically the same as like setting the birdhouse, but this one's going to be reading like how many we've emptied. So this one we're going to leave this as two because obviously we're on number two, but uh. We're going to set this as, so if we go back to number one, we need to do if empty equals one. And then for number two, we're going to do if empty equals two. Uh, and for three, same thing. and four and now to set these we're just gonna do um, so when we empty one we're gonna interact with empty and then we're gonna increase this empty integer let me go to number one first and we could just copy uh, actually I'll take this back to script factory all right so method 22 did that not save refresh all right so if empty equals one we're gonna you know click on the empty we'll add a new line here we're going to operation empty set as two okay and then same for this next one so go to integer perform operation empty set as three and the exact same thing here I set this as four. All right. So now, basically, what's going to happen is like, so let's say this one equaled one, right? Well, then once I empty it, it sets it as two, so it's not going to try to to re-empty this same one. Now it knows that it needs to empty this one first. Now, right now, it's set as two, so it should know that it needs to go empty number three, I believe. Let's see. So empty birdhouse two. Okay, so actually I need to start this as three. Because again, guys, since I'm creating this mid script, uh, I have to actually like preset the integers. But when we run a full run, it should it should work perfectly fine. All right, so when I press play, um, let me see here, twenty-eight. Oh, fuck. I switched it over to Script Factory GUI and I didn't save it before I changed this on here. Oops. All right, let me re-add those there real quick. Uh, I'm just gonna do it on here. It's easier for me. Okay, so now I refresh this. Uh, we should be good to go. 28. What's 20? Oh, all right, so 28 is running because I don't have the real ID of the next one. So I have it set as this, but I'm just going to set this as like, I don't know, 60 um, so that we can show you that it works. Uh, control H, go up here, 
the and then once we get to those ones then we'll just change the real ID over there but for tutorial purposes okay now all should be good so um, we let's look at the variable debugger it shows us that birdhouse is set to 2 empty is at 3 um, now we just need to use the magic mush tree which let's see what's going on why isn't it using the mush tree uh, birdhouse is greater than 2 if ours 2 object exists magic mush tree if widget contain text oh okay birdhouse is 2 it's it's saying if it's greater than 2 so it actually needs to be if it's greater than or equal to 2 on uh, method 16 so do greater than or equal to 2 alright refresh that press play there we go so now it's going to use it oh you know what um, I'm sorry I never changed birdhouse to 3 because we finished that second one so no this was right earlier let me change this back sorry guys okay I didn't set it to three because obviously we made that one as well but now we refresh this we play it's gonna go use the tree and now it should select mushroom meadow and we have method 30 running but that's just because we don't have the uh, the real IDs yet so let's get the real IDs first 30565 I'm gonna go grab the other one as well so we can just knock them both out um, on these ones we're gonna need to add like a walk to um, object so that it can actually interact with objects because they're further away they're not within a, like a visible range so method 3 control F30565 And this one is six six. Okay. All right, so all should be good there. Let's go back up here. Alright, so if we start here where we teleported in at and we just load the script in, refresh, play, play, let's see. Okay. Um, something that I should probably add, yeah, because it's going to keep interacting here. We probably should just add a location for the Verdant Valley uh, to know that we were in that location so let me just add that in real quick so we can uh, bypass this issue um, so we could either do that or we could do something simple like if rs2 object does not exist um, I don't know, fallen tree or, or something that's around the area but we, we're just gonna add the the area in so just create an area over here. Actually gonna make it a little bit bigger. So do like that. Just copy that. Over here, create an area. Okay, so now if I go ahead and open this back up, refresh it, go to method number 16, going to add new line here, if area contains my player, 
I need to update that. Um, yeah. And then we could also add, like, let's say, I don't know, for some reason we got stuck at the uh, house on the hill. We could just do basically the same thing. So, like, if I save this, okay. Let me update this name. And again, I'm going back to uh, VS Code just because I'm going to duplicate this method. Let's paste that there. We can do if area contains player true fossil island teleport. It's like, let's say that the birdhouse was greater than two. Well, actually, you know, I don't even need that because uh, the the first one will do it no matter what. If we are in that area, it's going to interact with the tree. All right, so refresh that. We'll play. Let's play there. Okay, so now it's going to create the birdhouse. Um, that just did it because it didn't sleep long enough. Uses that. And same thing there. So it's just not sleeping long enough. So I need to extend the sleeping time. Um, pause. Let's see here. Okay, so let's extend that sleep time. And we should be okay. Um, other than that, so like now that we know like if we're in this area here and we've created this one and it says let's say to uh, go to what is it four? Uh, right now it says it's ten. What did I fuck up on? Right here. Three zero five six six. Oh, okay. Um, so this is reading as true because this birdhouse actually does not exist. So I would want to put a if rs2 object exists on all of these actually um, to prevent that from happening. Um, so I'll go ahead and like I'll, I'll fix that right now, and then like if we do another run, it should be pretty much fine. Um, but so then what we'll do here is uh, we're gonna also gonna add like a coordinate check. So we'll check what our coordinate is, and we'll see if we are on Fossil Island and this coordinate is greater than whatever it is. Um, then we're going to run to this next location, which is our final location. And then uh, that should be pretty much the end. Uh, so let me add the object exist uh, thing real quick. Uh, so we'll just save that. Open on here. Go to method 33. I need to add it on all of them. So we'll do if rs2 object exist 30566 ID and then same for this one here this doesn't matter because we're checking to see if this has a real ID this one's like does not have real ID and does not have action so we want to verify that, that object is there before we do that um, this one has action so we are checking technically if that objects there so the only other one would be like this one here. So this one, I need to do rs2 object exists, 30565 ID, pop that right there, and same for here. So as you guys go on, like, you're obviously going to notice, like, you're going to keep adding things, you know, from, you, you're never going to write something perfectly the first time. Um, you just keep debugging it while you go and you'll see that you might have missed something and you need to go back and add on to it and at some point once you finally you know finalize everything you'll be good you won't have any issues you'll be all set um, we are good to go alright so we use the seeds there whatever uh, we need to update this to four. Again, the only reason why we're doing that is because we're starting mid script. So only reason why. Um, so we'll save this, and then, all right. So let's add the walk to position, uh, which 
speaking of if we're going to use a like that other one since we need to walk to that location um, we're going to open up this map we're going to put a little area over here and we're just going to do like right there so we're going to walk to this this area so now area birdhouse ivy area and while we're at it we're gonna add the bank in Okay, I think we're going on about two hours now, so hopefully I can get this uh, all wrapped up soon and we'll be done. All right, so all we're going to check to see is we need to check our coordinate. So it's going to be our Y coordinate. So we'll just check to see if we are above, let's say... Um, like 3866 well actually so take like so we could use that but like let's say that we got we came over here and then for some reason we got stuck below here um, it technically would mess up somewhere so we'll just use something that's closer down there so uh, birdhouse ivy area 3815 we'll do like 3817 so all, all I'm saying here is like if my player chord is y it's greater than or equal to 3817 somewhere that's like out of existence for that uh fourth birdhouse and then we're gonna check to make sure that we're on fossil island um if area contains my player fossil island um we also need to check to verify if integer is birdhouse equals four then we will walk to the uh, birdhouse four position. So we'll walk to area, birdhouse, ivy area. You could use webwalker. Um, just do ignore check so it doesn't open up the quest to see if there's a easier way to get there every time. Um, break if under attack, break on death, disable run. We don't really care about any of those. All right, so we'll do that. And then let's also verify that empty equals four just in case if we didn't empty I don't know if birdhouse equals four empty should equal four but we'll just add it all right so we'll press play so now it's gonna walk to this birdhouse four area it gets it within view of the uh, birdhouse so then we can continue on we can continue on to uh, so I don't know if you guys hear them talking. Hey, can you come reset in here? Sorry for it, please. Yeah. All right, thank you. All right, so then uh, that's the last one. Again, you guys seen that it used the chisel. It's because I didn't did never go back and uh, uh, change the sleep settings. I just need to increase it a little bit. Um, but anyway, so now we will uh, set it to go to the bank and we'll open up the bank and we'll just get ready for another run or, or whatever the case is. So we'll know that if we look at our debugger, birdhouse is set as 10, right? So now we're going to start our birdhouse timer and all that stuff. So we'll do if Let's see here, get integer birdhouse equals 10. So that's what we set it as for the last one. And make sure I set this as 35. Um, ver uh, let's do timers, restart timer, birdhouse timer. Set that as 35. Then we're going to do 
walk to area fossil island bank web walk ignore checks yep okay we'll go ahead and press play press play there All right, so you can see our birdhouse timer started. Um, so actually, it's going to keep resetting. So what I need to do on this one, right, is uh, it's it's fine if it's going to keep resetting. But what I want to do is, like, if, let's say, like, this destination that I went to, right? If we got to this destination, now I want to set uh, birdhouse back to, like, 1 or whatever the case is. And uh, we can... That, that way it doesn't keep resetting the birdhouse timer, which the proper way is to actually not set it as that right there, but instead we'll walk to this area and then let's do a if ours2 object um, exists and we'll just do the bank chest, right? So that, that way we know that we're at the bank. If ours2 object exists, bank chest, um, we can reset this birdhouse timer. I'm sorry, not yet, but we're going to do other variables, integer, perform operation, birdhouse, we're going to set this as, set it as zero, right? And then we can do, I'm actually going to uh, leave this here, because what it would have done, so it sets it as 10. Then it walks to this area. It's going to keep resetting it, whatever, until it gets to the bank chest. This sets it as zero. And then at this point, the timer has already been started. It's not going to end up stopping. Um, but it's not 10 anymore. So it's going to, it's not going to keep resetting. So we'll keep that how it is. And then with this set as zero, what we'll do is we'll do a, um, let's do if this equals zero we can either like start a break for an hour or do whatever you want you can switch to a script whatever the case is it didn't add it hold on integer get integer birdhouse equals zero right so the biggest thing here is we need to remember to like tell it to set it to go and do another run so we'll do if uh, timer is not running so timer is not running birdhouse timer then we're going to set this integer back to one perform operation birdhouse set as one and we're going to set empty as one uh, let me double check this to make sure that I have that set up that way yeah empty equals one and this is just so that we're getting it ready for the next run. So like, um, we're presetting it so that when it goes to another run, empty is set as one and birdhouse is set back to one where it should be so it knows what to do. So we'll do empty set as one. Random we don't really care about because it's constantly generating a new random integer when it uses the birdhouse. Uh, that's another thing that I actually forgot is uh, we need to where we create the birdhouse we need to increase this randomization so it's not long enough so we'll do uh, sleep random let's put it as 1200 to 1800 copy that we'll delete the old one paste that one delete that one save it alright so <clears throat> The way that I have this set up, because I'm not going to set it up to break, and I'm not going to go into breaks right now, but we have this set up to uh, basically do this. Um, I'm also going to set it to turn the has items false. That way it knows that it needs to get the new items. Um, unfortunately, because I'm not going to code in this bank right now, um, and since OSBot doesn't recognize this as a bank, it's probably going to go to like rock or something to bank but if you guys want to edit this up and create this as a bank it's as easy as just using interact with ours to object bank chest use as the action and then boom now you have a bank here um, 
but if I press play on here, again, our timer is still running. It's walking to this bank. Okay, timer is not going to reset anymore because birdhouse equals zero. And now all we're doing is we're waiting for the timer to stop running. It's going to set it as one. It's going to set has items as false. And it's going to set empty as one, which will basically tell it to reset to get all the items out of the bank and uh, do whatever you need to do. So that's... Hold on, let me mute this mic. All right, that's uh, that's pretty much everything. That's how you would use integers, booleans, timers. Uh, we even had like a random integer in there to create a birdhouse script. Uh, I mean, it should be fully usable. I can test it in an hour, um, but I don't see why we would have any issues. Um, other than that, if you guys don't have any questions, then I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the class here. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and stop this now.